Howdy folks, John here. Just doing a quick follow-up video today on the little eSky 150EC as you can see. I did a review on this uh, about a week ago. I'll fire a link below in the description if you wanted to check it out. Very cool little micro scale EC135 heli. A uh, couple of reoccurring questions were coming up both in the comments and uh, on my website and the emails there regarding uh, pairing it to a proper computerized radio. And as you can see, the answer is yes, provided it's a multi-protocol radio. I'll go over quickly what's involved in that. And a follow-up question to that was, can you get rid of the dead band? Actually, does it even have any dead band to start out with? And yes, it does on cyclic. So aileron and elevator, quite a bit of dead band out of the box. A lot of micros, that have toy radios that have poor stick centering, have that built right into the helicopter. But you can uh, program it out if you want to using your radio. And I'll quickly show you that. It's just on uh, cyclic though, tail rotor, there's hardly any. It's really quite good in that respect. So it's not a huge deal, I don't think, but uh, if you don't like that feel around center stick, we'll get rid of it. Let's go down to the shop. This is going to be short and sweet because I've already covered binding an eSky helicopter to open Edge TX and Multi Protocol in another video in a lot more detail. It's on the eSky 300 V2. I will link to it below in the description. If none of this makes sense, that video covers it in a lot more detail. I just want to show the basics of this one. There's really only one difference with the 150 EC and that is the channel 5, the altitude hold channel. You don't have that on the 300 V2, so we have to set that up on here. Just going to quickly go through the radio settings and we'll be done. So first thing we're going to do is go into our model setup menu. You can enter a name if you want in an image file. But most importantly, we want to scroll down to the protocol. So we want to use the multi module, multi protocol module, and the main protocol is eSky V2 and the sub protocol is 150 V2. So heli was plugged in first, it's in bind mode, green LED is flashing and we just scroll down to bind. Enter it. It'll beep. It's bound. It's that simple. So once it's bound we'll just uh, scroll through our other setup menus here. Heli setup, just leave it uh, you don't have to touch a thing. This is just regular servo. There's no internal radio mixing, flight modes, nothing going on there. Inputs. Again, my other video covers this in detail. This is where I put all my uh, dual rates on my input side. Mixing. This is the important one. This uh, is your channel order. So elevators on channel one, throttles on channel two, ailerons on channel three, rudders on channel four, Altitude hold is on channel 5, and channel 6 is throttle cut or throttle hold. So those are your channel orders or channel mapping, that's very important. And like I said, channel 5 is the one that's different from the 300 V2, so this is the only one I'm going to cover. And I've just got it hooked up to my SB toggle up here. and just got it at 100% and I'm using a basically a two position switch curve. It's very important that this altitude hold switch is just two position output. You don't want a mid position output because it causes the rotor speed to jump and then die out. So you either want it on or off. Altitude hold. So I've got it altitude hold in the up position. You can see the output here is at minus 110%. Pink and in the normal mode, 110% positive. And I'll get to why it's 110% right away here. So that's the only different one. I'll show you that uh, custom two position switch curve. You can do the same thing, however, with logical switch programming. And the outputs, this is the other important uh, variation. All the channel centering is at 1500, so no, nothing to set there. All the channel directions are normal, arrow to the right. 
but you want to increase your channel output to 110% in both directions on all channels. Very important, however, that channel 6, you increase it to 120% in both directions, or it won't engage and disengage throttle hold. And then as far as the curves go, I'll just show you that two position switch curve. So in one position, it's giving minus 100% output. And in position, mid position and high position, 100% output. Again, you could do that with logical switch programming though. And the other thing on here is dead band. I've got a dead band eliminating curve. I've got a video on that that goes into a lot more detail as well. But all you're doing is you're giving the output around mid stick a sharp increase in output. It's not linear right around mid stick and that's what eliminates that dead band. And you'll notice if we go back to, oops, went too far. If we go back to our um, mixes on elevator and aileron, I'm using the dead band elimination curve. So my cyclic control, aileron elevator, uh, doesn't have that dead band. I'm not using it on rudder, however, because like I said at the beginning, rudder doesn't have much dead band at all on this uh, little heli. And that's pretty much it. So like I said, short and sweet, but uh, if it didn't make much sense, that other video already covered it all. That's why I didn't want to spend too much time on this. Thanks for watching, folks. See you later. Happy flights.